Well, good morning, folks. It is a wonderful Sunday morning, Mother's Day 2023. And I have decided, I feel like doing some home brewing, but I am a little bit lazy this morning. I don't want to be technically challenged. For those of you that watched the video on my linear power supply that I built using two rewound microwave transformers, a bit of a Frankenstein's monster project, I did order some resistors that I needed. I thought they seemed fairly expensive, but uh, ordered them anyway. It was online, and when they turned up, I thought I was actually ordering a two-pack. <laughs> and, you know, I had reams of, of resistors turn up, so I thought to myself, well, what can I do with those? Now, they're probably not the most ideal resistors to use in a dummy load, but uh, we're going to run with it. Um, I'm sure there's better types of resistors to use. But for an HF dummy load, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Comment below if you think I'm an idiot. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, parallel these up and just get as many of them as I can until I get to an approximate 50 ohm load. I'm not too fussy about it. Anywhere around 50 ohms would be fine. 50, 49, 52, whatever, around that, around that area. And we're going to put them in a can, immerse them in some mineral oil so that it uh, can take away the heat. And on my ATU, we have a dummy load position. In fact, I'll show you that now. And here is my beautiful Kenwood AT230 manual tuner. And for those of you, once again, who have watched the channel, will have seen this already, but uh, What's wonderful about it is it's got a good number of choices of antennas on the back here. And if you flick it down to dummy load position, um, you can select a dummy load so that when you're uh, tuning up the finals on your Kenwood TS520 or the rig that you've got that has two finals, you're able to tune it up into a 50 ohm load uh, so that if the antenna isn't perfectly resonant, you're not going to have issues with that. Uh, uh, making your tubes uh, heat up and really putting them through uh, excruciating amounts of agony. Now, a quick aside, for the newbie hams that don't know what a dummy load is, a dummy load is basically just a resistive load, a giant resistor that will take all the electromagnetic energy from your transmitter that would normally become RF radiation from the antenna and turns it into heat. So basically, let's you test your transmitter without actually transmitting. So I really should be on the workbench, but uh, I was just working uh, 20 meters, had a nice old chat with uh, Bruce, VK4 Yankee Sierra, and also Malcolm, Victor Kilo 7, November Sierra Sierra. So we were working Queensland and Tasmania, just outside Launceston, and both those signals were fantastic. In fact, uh, Bruce's signal was, you know, five and nine plus, and uh, Malcolm was only uh, using an antenna that was, uh, he was in a portable or a, a location that he sets up temporarily. And he was running a long wire antenna that's a meter off the ground. And I was still getting him five by seven. So 20 meters wasn't too bad working Australia. Uh, both those uh, contacts were a thousand Ks plus. But today we're just uh, pairing up these uh, resistors and uh, I'm gonna keep pairing them up till I get a uh, resistance that approximates uh, 50 ohms. We're going to get the high wattage uh, iron out. And we've got some um, circuit board material. It's not double sided, it's single sided, but that'll do. I'll probably split that in half and hopefully we'll be able to solder all the resistors to one side. And then at the other end, we'll have to play around, I think, because uh, trying to solder two plates together is going to be impossible. Uh, but we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. And, and, you know, obviously when you're doing something like this, uh, if you wanted it to be a good dummy load at, uh, at higher frequencies, say in the VHF and UHF ranges, obviously, um, this is not going to be what you're going to be doing. Um, you're probably going to go and buy something that's higher spec or build something a lot better because if the leads are too long, um, you're going to have inductive effects and it's not going to, um, operate well at the higher frequencies. But what I will do uh, is once I've got it finished, I will nano VNA it and just have a look at its frequency response uh, and see whether it's 50 ohms across the board and how high I can use it. Uh, but I'm sure 
up to 30 megs, it should be fine. Please pardon the fan noise because we don't want to be breathing the cancer producing smoke that's coming up the soldering iron. We've checked to see what the resistance is on this thing and at the moment we're sitting around just under 81. So we're just going to keep adding resistors and I still don't think we we might not have enough so that's going to be interesting so might be a bit of a mishmash but anyway we'll see how we go <laughs> well there you have it 50.4 ohms uh, we've got a few alligator clips and stuff happening here so we'll, we'll tidy this all up normally 50 ohms if you're wondering uh, how many resistors i've used i have used 93 of those resistors that have been put to good use 93 4.7 kilo ohm one watt resistors so even on their own admittedly they're packed quite closely together so i wouldn't want to be pumping 100 watts through this on its own but bathing it in some mineral oil i am sure that it'll take away enough heat for this to uh, be able to be used to tune up the TS520 in short bursts, which is all I need. And uh, hopefully uh, this will all fit into a tin and I'll be able to find the oil that I need. And by the end of this weekend, we will have the dummy load that we've always hankered after. Well, we decided to add another pair of resistors. So or one extra resistor to make it an even 94. So 94. 4.7 kilo ohm resistors in parallel has got us to 49.8 ohms, approximately. Close enough, nominally, to 50 ohms. I think by the time we add uh, connectors and whatnot, uh, we'll be there. So now we'll probably nano VNA it 1 to, uh, 1 to 30 megahertz to see how it performs in the HF band. And... Uh, and get it into a uh, into a can and some oil. Guess where I am? Congrats. Back in my favourite place. And this is the uh, Digger's Paraffin Oil. AKA a mineral oil. It's a byproduct of uh, petroleum distillation and it's to dissipate the heat. Now, transformer oil is always going to be better, but uh, hey, we couldn't get our hands on that. So, this is going to do the trick. Yes, I know it looks like a piece of performance art, but uh, that is the 94 4.7 kilo ohm resistors. And we are now going to uh, mount this in a can. And there you have it, folks. One a dummy load. We've got our earth lug on there. And I have smeared what's left of my um, clear celastic oil clear just around where the uh, BNC comes in. And I'm probably going to put a bit around the rim as well. I want to fill this thing up with the mineral oil. So I'll show you that as well. Okay, so we are doing this outside because we know it's going to be messy. <laughs> and it's a bit of a... Uh, Archimedes principle happening here because we want to make sure that when we fill this up it's nice and full but it doesn't overflow and from my memory of people that have had these in their shacks they invariably do overflow at some point in time so we'll probably be chucking it in a cardboard box or something underneath the bench Let's see how this goes. We can still put a bit more in there. Five hooks and things. It's not too reactive and from 1 to 30 megahertz, you can see here, SWR is um, 1 is to 
and it sort of climbs as you go towards 30 megs. But even when you hit 30 megs, it's, uh, let's have a look. The 30 megs is 1 is to 1 1.4, so still very usable. And you can see in the center, this uh, Smith chart here, not terribly reactive over that uh, distance as well. So over that spectrum as well. So pretty good, but the sad part is the bloody case is leaking. <laughs> so I'm screwed. So I'm going to have to find another case for it, but at least we know the actual load works. Let's uh, fire up the magic box. And we are on antenna one, which is what we presently have our dummy load connected to. The dummy load is uh, over here in the bucket where it needs to be, unfortunately. Um, we're on rig three over here. If I was on the wrong rig, that would be a problem. But we're rig three, so that's all good. We are ready to fire up. We'll just uh, let the uh, tube heaters just warm up. A bit of tune. And we'll see. Get some uh, carrier happening. Let's do this on, let's do it on 7 megs is a good band to do it on. We're still on tune. It's putting out 5 watts. We've uh, picked out our drive. We have dipped our plate. And now we go to CW. And I'll just grab the key. I'll put that into Vox. And this goes to RF. Let's switch this to 200 watts. And then we'll just do the plate and load. It's at about 70 watts. Um, this rig definitely has issues. Uh, reverse power. So that's all looking like it should. So that's taking 50 watts. And the load, um, yeah, not even warm to touch. We'll do a calibration. So SWR is minuscule. Um, forward power is 50 watts there. And that's all folks. Well, thanks for sticking around right to the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed this little journey into the making of a dummy load. I think it's a simple project that uh, most people can attempt and make a success. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of The Art of Engineering 73.